the green hydrogen ball is finally starting to roll. Every single investor, engineer on this earth is trying to figure out what it will it take for the cost of hydrogen to actually come down. Because obviously right now, the infrastructure is not there, the cost to the consumer is too high, and the technology is too inefficient and too expensive. Well, I have some great news for you. A country by the name of India has just announced a revolutionary policy package that can actually and realistically bring down the cost of hydrogen for you and me. I'm not kidding when I say this, but this package that India's government has just announced is the actual solution to bringing down the cost of hydrogen and rolling the fuel cell market forward. Because right now, the US and Europe simply have not figured it out. It's time to stop with the political stunts and the incentives that are doing no justice to the cost of hydrogen and start focusing on where the real investments are, which right now is in India. And that opportunity is exactly what I want to address in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, we need to understand where the Indian economy is, where the Indian decarbonization race is, and how the cost of great hydrogen is expected to come down by 2030. Well, it all starts with India announcing back in 2021 their aim to produce 5 million tons of green hydrogen out of nowhere per year by 20. 30. This obviously comes as a surprise because India's over 70% energy mix comprises of coal and natural gas. So it's very difficult to understand how would India invest in hydrogen technology, which right now is a decarbonization tool, if their fossil fuel industry is already so profitable. And this is what the West is missing out on. India's policies that have been laid out in this package are actually the solution we need to bring down costs, not only for the consumer, which is what the West is focusing on, but from production to transportation. And it's all gonna take place with India's two biggest billionaires fighting it off for the crown. And well, how exactly will that take place? Well, with the help of Asia's biggest billionaires in Gautam Adani and Mukesh Ambani, both of which control some of the biggest oil and gas companies in the entire continent. Reliance Corporation is a conglomerate based in Mumbai, India, which is right now investing $75 billion in green hydrogen technology to bring down its own emissions and bring down the cost to a dollar per kilogram. This is something no other conglomerate in the entire world has ever done before, particularly with the help of the government. And trust me when I say this, this relationship between the Indian government and the private enterprise is exactly what we need to drive down the cost of green hydrogen, and here's why. You see, the problem with the West is that we provide a lot of incentives to make people buy hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, but we have little to no incentives for companies to form in the production, transportation, and creation space of hydrogen. And that is why the cost is still so expensive and why the infrastructure is lagging behind adoption and innovation. But India seems to have this situation figured out. Their policies announced for hydrogen are actually genius because instead of just focusing on these useless incentives, they're actually gonna incentivize some of the biggest corporations in the country to produce hydrogen and force them to use a certain amount of their energy mix from green hydrogen. This term might actually sound familiar to a lot of you that are in the renewable energy space, but the RPO has been brought back to life, which is essentially the mandation for some of the country's biggest energy consumers to use a portion of their energy from green hydrogen is gonna be introduced for this revolutionary fuel. And well, the reason why this is such an important deal is because the RPO is what led to the decline in prices for solar and wind technologies over the past few decades. Solar is still extremely inefficient and extremely capital intensive to make, a problem that it shares with hydrogen technology, for example. But the reason why its cost came down and the reason why we start to see solar panels everywhere these days is because the RPOs were introduced by certain countries across the world, which forced economies of scale to grow and as a result, bring down the cost. And in this case, not only is India gonna be leveraging these RPOs, they're also gonna be waiving a lot of interstate transmission charges for electricity and green hydrogen. This is the key to bringing down overall supply chain costs for manufacturing, producing, and processing green 
hydrogen. This is obviously an expensive fuel, but when you combine it with policies like these that actually incentivize the production and the creation of companies in this space, that's when you get the biggest economies of scale push to bring down the cost. And a big reason for that is that India is making it cheaper for companies to set up and buy land for their green hydrogen production. This is big because green hydrogen takes up a lot of space to make. And right now, the big problem is capital expenditure for companies that are right now strapped for cash. And when you have companies in the oil and gas space coming together to work on this, their technology can be leveraged very easily to bring down supply chain related issues and also create demand, again, bringing down the cost. And guess what? This isn't just a dream. The country's biggest private enterprises by the name of Reliance Industries and the Adani Group are actually following suit with what the Indian government is doing and investing rapidly in green hydrogen, electric and battery technology, which is exactly what you want to see when you want to bring down overall consumer costs. When you have two of Asia's biggest billionaires competing for the crown in the hydrogen space, in this case, Mukesh Ambani and Gautam Adani, that is the competition that's going to spark up the race for the hydrogen economy and bring down the consumer's cost. This is what happened in the Industrial Revolution back in the 1800s and with the automobile in the 1900s. Ford, GM and all these automakers came out in the early times of the automobile to produce cars at a fast rate. But obviously only a few survived and it's all that competition that actually innovated the technology and brought down the cost for the end consumer and just like they say competition is king and obviously this is the opportunity that hydrogen provides it helps us tie together the oil and gas and renewable energy industries in a way that we've never done before because obviously hydrogen can be produced from solar and wind yet it can be used as feedstock in hydrogen demanding industries like oil refineries fertilizer production and steel manufacturing. And if you truly want to understand the effect that these investments are going to take, right now the cost of producing green hydrogen is around five dollars per kilogram. But by 2030, we expect it to come down to a dollar per kilogram because obviously, right now, we are just at the beginning of the economies of scale starting to set in. And guess what? Even at ten dollars per kilogram, green hydrogen is competitive with other fossil fuel derived hydrogen for applications like industry feedstock. Meanwhile, for more specific and niche applications like trucks, cars, and even space heating, the costs need to come down to around five, four, and two dollars per kilogram respectively. And this is exactly how this ball will start to roll over the next few years. Right now, we need to enter that four dollar per kilogram range, which we're really not that far away from before we can start seeing space heating become competitive, then trucks, then cars, and then hydrogen steel production. And we've already seen case studies of how green hydrogen is actually cheaper in countries that have a lot of solar and a lot of land available like the Middle East. And India is no different in this case, except that India is actually the third biggest carbon emissions polluter in the world, and they have the biggest reward potential from such an investment. And unlike the US or Europe, India actually has a big incentive to continue investing in green hydrogen because right now they're a massive importer of fossil fuels. Green hydrogen will allow them to decentralize and reduce their dependence on these oil costs, which obviously are more expensive when gotten from China or Russia, which right now is turning out to be a very, very precarious situation. Unlike just investing in battery and renewable technology, green hydrogen actually allows India to produce a fuel from those technologies, which can help offset their natural gas and coal dependence from other countries, which is obviously something that the politicians of the Indian government would really appreciate. And since we all know that over 60% of the cost of making green hydrogen is the cost of the electricity, with India being the lowest cost clean energy producer in the entire continent, there is a massive opportunity for India to not only spur demand for hydrogen, but also spur investment from external companies, especially in the US. And this is exactly why I think India's initiatives are not only going to drive their own decarbonization race, but also the global decarbonization race, which obviously is accelerating at a faster pace than it has ever before. It's all about bringing down the cost of the technology, investing in economies of scale and tying together the right stakeholders so that the policies can be met and the cost from production to consumption can come down. And that right there, guys, is the key to solving the hydrogen 
problem. I really hope I could provide you guys some valuable information in this video. This is certainly a very interesting topic that I want to continue to pay attention to over the next year, because obviously I'm a big investor in hydrogen companies here in the US. But obviously, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.